So welcome back to some more Grand Theft Auto Vice City. In this part, we will be completing the 35 rampages that you can do across Vice City, starting with the ones located on Vice City East, and then we will move slowly but surely to Vice City West. And I say it like that because the process of doing these rampages is a fairly time-consuming one, and I'm not even showing off in this video me going from rampage location to the next one. And I will admit at times, it did take a little while to find some of these rampages because they were well hidden behind bushes and shrubbery and things like that, which, you know, I enjoy a good bush, but sometimes it just elongates the process, among other things. So uh, I think it's a bit more viewer friendly, and hopefully, people enjoy that this video is being sped up in two times speed. But either way, we begin with this first rampage that involves using a rocket launcher to destroy 10 vehicles in two minutes. Now, it may seem like a fairly easy task, but the thing about those using a rocket launcher while destroying vehicles rampages is that they tend to be located in fairly crappy locations, like uh, that first one was out in the middle of nowhere pretty much in the water, and the only vehicles that spawn out there are boats that are being operated by pedestrians, so they're gonna be moving targets, and I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not exactly the best shot using a rocket launcher, so it's a bit tough shooting those far away moving boats. So I figure, why not use a helicopter to not only get to the rampage, but also to leave the area and go to a bit more of a high traffic uh, word to play, but move to a bit more of a vehicle dense location, such as by Colonel Cortez's mission giving spot location where he had his giant yacht um, docked at, but uh, that area has a bunch of different boats docked at the pier, and then um, behind the building I was standing on, you also had um, roads where you can shoot moving targets, which I know I was downplaying the moving targets earlier, but the thing about the cars on the roads is that they're a lot closer to you and easier to shoot at than the boats that would be off in the distance if we stayed at that water location. So that's a recommendation there, and we'll see it play out a bit more for the other rampages that have that same objective, but just in different spots in Vice City. And, uh, well, after that rampage, we had the mullet of cocktail ran rampage which is quite fun if I do say so myself and the thing about that rampage is that common sense more or less prevails in the way of having some form of strategy in that not only do you want to have full body armor and health but you also want to maintain some form of distance away from your target so that way you don't get caught in the blast radius of the mullet of cocktail because if you are caught in that then Tommy will catch on fire and start losing health although in the case of my game though Tommy has completed the firefighter mission, so he can get all up in the business of these gang members while basically just feeding them Molotov cocktails because he won't take damage from fire. So, you know, that in itself is a recommendation right there to complete the uh, firefighter mission if you're having trouble with those, I guess, rampages involving fire. So, yeah, doing that will turn Tommy into a water type and he'll be resistant to the fire, although you know, Tommy would make for a very bad water type because he can't swim, so... But, you know, whatever, that's that's besides the point right there. Uh, but after that, we had a sniper fest, and I really didn't find that too difficult, but the thing about these early Grand Theft Auto games is that the controls are really crappy in terms of free aiming uh, with the sniper rifle, the Ruger assault rifle, um, the rocket launcher even. I mean, uh, the controls are very jittery and kind of stiff, so it's like sometimes you overshoot what you're trying to shoot at, and oftentimes you can miss the opportunity of shooting at whatever you want because you've overshot, um, I guess, the target you were trying to shoot at. So, you know, it's all a big mess of words right there, but you get the idea. It's just kind of hard to control the free aim controls in these early Grand Theft Auto games, although on the PC, because PC Master Race and all that. I mean, I hope people know I'm just taking the piss out of that. It's all Eben May Mays and such, but you get the idea because on PC it's just you're using the mouse to point and click pretty much at whatever you want to shoot at, so it's a bit easier there, but you know, on the PlayStation 2 it's a, it's a different story, but either way, I really didn't find that too difficult because well, you're pretty close to your targets anyways, and also um, I don't know, there's really no threat of dying or really getting shot at too much because you're on an elevated area. So anyways, after that you had two melee weapon rampages, which both operate differently because the way the chainsaw works is that when Tommy is in a, in a stationary position, he will remain in a stationary position while doing this animation of hacking and slashing, which is kind of cool, but 
it's kind of annoying because you also have gang members around the gang member you're currently killing in that animation um, shooting at you, so you can't really run and move away from that. You you pretty much just have to take all the bullets like a sponge, so it's kind of annoying in that regard. So a way to combat that animation occurring is to move while using the chainsaw. You'll still do massive damage to your enemies, but you won't be caught in a stationary animation, so you can run away or at least try to maneuver around people shooting at you and stuff. So that's an idea right there, but with the katana, it is different because you want to be in that stationary um, animation that plays out with the katana because that animation leads to a lot of one-hit kills and when you're running and swinging in the katana it's pretty much just like rubbing a butter knife on someone it, it just tickles them more or less I mean it's a really bad way of trying to get kills with the katana so you kind of have to apply the opposite logic or reverse logic whatever you want to say uh, when doing those two rampages, and we'll have more of that a bit later on. There is another katana rampage later on, but for right now we had two shotgun as well as a uh, assault rifle free aiming rampage, so the shotgun ones I like quite a bit because it's always fun using a shotgun to take down enemies and such, although with that first shotgun one you're using not exactly the best shotgun in the world because it does take multiple hits at times to take care of enemies, but it's still a lot of fun either way. Um, you know, it takes me back to my Call of Duty days as a, as a youth uh, playing that with friends and such. Because I remember in Modern Warfare 2, uh, man, the Spaz shotgun was a lot of fun. I mean, all the shotguns in that game were a lot of fun. And then in Black Ops and Zombie mode in the early in the early levels, you can use shotguns and just absolutely destroy the zombies chasing you. It was a lot of fun seeing their like arms fall off and stuff. Yeah, this is some good times and some good Phyllis speak there to irrelevant topics. But either way, um, the Spaz 12. Um, shotgun Rampage is a lot easier, and oh man, that's just so much fun because the Spaz shoots so quickly, and it's like, it's just like a machine gun, but with a shotgun just shooting at your targets. Man, I mean, these Rampages have kind of sparked new life in the interest of playing this game, I, boy, I tell you. But uh, beyond that, though, the Assault Rifle one is more or less the same complaining about the free aim controls because they are very jittery and such, but um, it's not too bad because that Assault Rifle was very powerful, so it's kind of like a two to three hit kill for a lot of the enemies that you're shooting at. So beyond that, you uh, just saw the Drive-By Rampage, which, um, I don't know, I mean, I like them, um, but they are kind of annoying because, you know, a lot of the time you'll have those large groups of gang members just kind of, you know, o overwhelm you pretty much. And then they'll pull you out of your vehicle and throw you on the ground and then you have to deal with that. And we will actually see that happen a bit later on for another drive-by rampage. But thankfully that one went fairly smoothly, uh, just driving around that circle area in that neighborhood. So that wasn't too bad, but... Here we have another chainsaw one, and you can see the strategy of just kind of always moving while using the the uh, chainsaw is a very good strategy there. But, you know, I'd like to take a moment to kind of pat myself on the back because I'd say I'm handling most of these rampages with a lot of aplomb uh, to get a bit fancy with the vocab, although we will be having our, having our struggles a bit later on with the sniper rampages because you know, it just doesn't seem like enemies like spawning in too often, and it reminds me, there was this rampage in Grand Theft Auto 3 where you're on top of this super high building, and it's like actually a wooden ramp that you're standing on that is like a stunt jump, but um, you're standing on it and you're supposed to shoot Colombian cartel members with headshots, so it's like super difficult just getting the headshot in the first place uh, if you have bad aiming like how I do, but I enjoy blaming the game for that problem, um, but also it's like you have trouble with just the Colombian cartel spawning in anyways, and that's kind of the issue you have um, with a lot of these sniper rampages, and then with the rocket launcher rampages involving blowing up vehicles, it's like even when you do go to a more dense, I guess, vehicle area, you still have problems with the, you know, vehicles actually spawning in, and they don't spawn in as often as you'd like, so... Um, I don't know, I mean, maybe some people have their own strategies that, that are more effective, and I'd actually like to see them. I enjoy seeing what people do during rampages, I don't know why. It's just kind of interesting for the more difficult rampages anyways. It's like something like this, it's not too bad, because it, it's like it's a freaking Col Colt Python. You're gonna be taking down these enemies in one hit, so there's really not too much strategy to it. It's just shoot as quickly as you can. 
I mean, with the uh, assault rifle one that we did before the rocket launcher one right now, it's like, that one's kind of difficult-ish because of the, you know, stuttery and jittery free aim controls, which, I don't know, I mean, maybe some people don't really have too many problems with them, but, you know, it's like, for me, I like blaming the game, so I'm gonna blame the game. No one, no one's gonna stop this business here, but, you know, it's, <laughs> right there, right there is the instance of someone, like, dragging you out of your car, which, thankfully, and I love seeing this interaction happen, but they're like the security guards that run around the place in this area by the mall, so sometimes you'll see the security guards shooting and getting into a bit of a, a mini gang war with the um, gang that spawns in here, which I guess would be the Cubans in this case, which I think is consistent throughout all the different versions of this game, but um, either way, you just get them shooting at each other, and oh man, it's it's one of my favorite parts about these older Grand Theft Auto games, because in Vice City you get instances like that, and also when you, I guess, just get gang members kind of crossing into each other's territories, which mainly happen with the Cubans and Haitians, but um, it's like in Grand Theft Auto 3, you get the triads and the Mafia having very adjacent turfs, which I guess the... Mafia and Diablo do too, but it's more entertaining with the Mafia and the Triads because they have the better weapons on Portland So you get them kind of crossing into each other's turf Maybe you get a Mafia Sentinel going into Chinatown and then they just kind of get into a bit of a, a Fest of a bunch of Triads chasing down a, a, a Sentinel and then the Sentinel gets at a red light and then they pull the Mafia guy out of the car and then well, the triads all have baseball bats, so they get shot at with the pistol, and it's like they start running away from the from the guy that they were just chasing. So, you know, it's really fun just seeing the interactions that occur with the AI in these early Grand Theft Auto games. So, so you know, it's like it's something like that I could talk about all day. But we have rampages that I'm apparently making a guide for. So, uh, beyond that, you had the uh, another drive-by um, rampage that wasn't too bad there, outside of getting pulled out of my vehicle, but. The whole rant was about the interaction between the uh, the Cubans and the uh, security guy, so that was quite nice that that little diversion happened so I can re-enter my Infernus and begin, or at least continue doing the drive-by thing, but after that uh, we have this little flamethrower thing here, uh, which is quite fun. You know, this is the first time in this game I'm showing off the flamethrower, and man, you know, it's like the mullet of cocktails are pretty fun. This thing right here is actually not half bad to play around with. You know, it's uh, I think it's a bit better than in Grand Theft Auto 3, because I feel like in in 3, the range of the flamethrower wasn't that great. Um, but I like the screams more in Grand Theft Auto 3, as weird as that sounds, uh, more than here in Vice City, because it's like, they're very over the top. I mean, it's like you can't really say, or I don't know, it's just very weird saying that, oh, that doesn't sound like a genuine scream right there, but I don't know, man, it's just like, to me... They were better in Grand Theft Auto 3 than in here, but I mean, that's that's such a small detail to complain about. So either way, it's just a lot of fun just kind of mowing down people with the flamethrower and, and things like that, which it just feels so awkward talking about something like that like that. But either way, it's a video game, you know, you're supposed to let the hair down, let the bush hang out and such. But anyways, uh, we moved forward now to more fire with a uh, mullet of cocktail thing going on here. Uh, but with a few more gang members that need to be, I guess, burned. Um, so it's like, it, it's quite nice. It really doesn't provide a bit more of a challenge, I don't think. Because I feel like over here, um, you get like more giant groups of gang members just kind of hanging out with each other. So it's not that big of a deal that you're... I guess given the challenge of having to kill more of these gang members uh, in that particular rampage, but again, maintaining a distance and all that business uh, will lead to a good time for you. Um, but something that won't lead to a good time for you is using a Foggio during one of these drive-by rampages, because it's like, it's such a dangerous thing using a bike in pretty much any instance anyways, because I've made a note of this probably millions of times at this point, but it's like, if someone even breathes next to you, you fall off the bike, so, you know, it's, you're playing a dangerous game here using a, uh, any bike, even if this were like the PCJ, it's like, it's not a smart idea um, doing something like this because of the police attention and also the very strong likelihood of a gang member popping out one of your tires so then you're kind of like swerving and jittering all over the place in your bike so it's it's just it can be a bad time for you so you know you probably don't want to use this use something like the infamous like we were using earlier but i guess for the self challenge it is a lot of fun using a bike though um 
mainly because in my case it went very well for me. I'm sure if I kept getting like smashed off my bike, then it would have been a very annoying thing and then I'd probably be downplaying using a bike, but I don't know, for me it worked. Uh, so maybe for you it will as well, but the smart man uses a car during the drive-bys, but We've moved on now to this MG Rampage, which is kind of funny. You see that? You see, that's like the Grand Theft Auto 3 thing I was talking about earlier. It's like they begin chasing you, but then you shoot at them, and then they start running away. So it's like they didn't see that gun, that massive machine gun that you were holding when they initially started attacking you. So, you know, that's pretty funny stuff right there. But the thing I noticed about this Rampage is that even though you can't see the ammo count on the top right under the weapon, that weapon does have ammo, um, and I don't know if that's consistent through all the versions of this game, but I know I did fail that rampage because the MG wouldn't shoot anymore. It would just make the clicking noise that it was out of ammo, so I guess that's something they'll kind of watch out for, and you kind of have to treat that MG like a sniper from that point, um, just without the scope, because it's still a one-hit kill whenever you hit someone with that MG, so I guess that's just something to kind of watch out for. And uh, it is kind of annoying because, you know, you kind of have to deal with the cops and it's hard to make your escape. Like, there's a lot of situations where you're given a weapon where you can't sprint with the weapon. So the fastest way of movement at that point would just be jumping. Um, like, you, you just jump from place to place, which is very silly looking, but it is the more effective way of, I guess, moving with giant weapons like that for the ones that allow you to even jump because some of them are just so heavy like the rocket launcher to where you can't even jump so yeah that, that, there's some info for you there but moving forward though uh, after that shotgun rampage thing with the Haitian fellas uh, we have this this actually fairly difficult rampage uh, assuming you don't have a lot of health um, it's like one where you pretty much need to have max body armor and health because this thing is like a BB gun where you're trying to like kill these guys. It's, it's, it's just ineffective. I mean, this isn't Fallout 3 where it's a BB gun versus some cockroach looking thing. It's, it's real people, you know, they, they can just put band-aids over their, over their BB gun wounds and pretty much go about their business after that. So yeah, it's just really tough. So it's like you really got to stay mobile during that rampage and just kind of run around the place like a maniac. And, you know, it's a really silly looking thing because you'd see, you know, Tommy just one arming it while trying to shoot him, shoot behind him while he's running in one direction. I mean, it's just a very silly looking thing that goes on there. But um, it's an effective strategy, just kind of running all over the place like a madman. So which Mad Men is a fantastic show. Just want to just want to point that out there. But uh, more redundancy in that we have another shotgun uh, rampage here and that we're using the more crappy shotgun against these Cubans, which um, something that's kind of nice, though, uh, about this rampage versus the spaz rampage we just completed is that the Cubans don't immediately attack you unless you start shooting at them. And the Haitians, since we've done all those different missions involving um, Alberto Robina and uh, Antipole, um, <laughs> which which I rem I'm remembering during those cutscenes for the anti -Pole, pole missions, in that she likes spreading her legs a lot during the cutscenes, so thankfully Rockstar kind of darkens that area. But, you know, since we've done those missions, uh, the Haitians are mad at us, and they'll start attacking us from the moment they see us. So um, that's something you kind of got to worry about. And, then, you know, that right there is actually a good reason as to why that, that SMG rampage is so tough, because... They just instantly start attacking you. You can't necessarily get the jump on them um, in, in every instance. Sometimes you, you'll you be able to, but it doesn't always work out that way. But either way, uh, we've moved on now to this rampage right here, a sniping one, which you, know, you can see that I don't know if maybe my aim was off, but I feel like I was hitting that guy who was sticking his stomach out or whatever. You know, it's like, a, you know, I, I don't know what the deal is with that. It's like that guy too, he's not dying, but I'm like shooting at him, so... I don't know, maybe the hitbox with the street light is weird, but... Uh, a part of me likes thinking that maybe there is some type of restriction on the range of the sniper. Like, maybe those guys were just so far out of range to where the bullets just stopped before they hit the guy. I mean, I don't know, but... You know, that's like one of those rampages, though, where you do have problems with the people spawning in. So, I've noticed that by moving back and forth on that rooftop, 
you can kind of manipulate the spawns to where more gang members spawn in, so just, you know, I, I guess that's my recommendation there, to just move back and forth between both ends of that rooftop while trying to snipe the gang members below you, so... That's that rampage completed, and now we've moved on to this rampage here involving running over gang members in a car. And I like using the Infernus for a rampage like this because the Infernus is a sports car, so it's like super fast, but it's also a wider car, so it's like when gang members and pedestrians in general try jumping out of the way of you running them over they'll still get hit because of how wide the Infernus is compared to most other cars. So that's something to keep in mind there. It's actually a lot, of, a lot of fun using a wide vehicle like that. And, you know, if you wanted to get wide in real life, then, you know, you can eat lots of Cheez-Its, which, you know, to prevent that from happening to myself, I tend to stop after eating two boxes of them um, because, you know, Cheez-Its just go straight to your thighs. So, you know, beyond that, though, you also can go to the gym like a like a normal person, and, you know, that works out quite well. You know, you ever just love that feeling of going to the gym, and then once you're done with your workout, you just feel, like, so pumped? Like, even on cardio days where you're not lifting at all, it's like you, you feel tired, but it's a good feeling of being tired. It's like you know that you're alive, and it's like now, now I finally know what that saying is all about. Where it's like, you eat cheese, it's straight from the box, so you know that you're alive. And, you know, when people say things like that, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun stuff going to the gym and eating cheese, it's while also sipping on some Dr. Pepper. Man, that, oh man, that sounds phenomenal right now. Doing all those things, actually. Not necessarily at the same time, because you might see those Cheez-Its again after eating them, uh, which reminds me of some football things, uh, because for off-season workouts, you'd have a lot of people come in to the morning workouts, and they'd be, like, out of shape, so there'd be a good likelihood of them, I guess, being reacquainted with their cereal that morning, so, you know, if you know what I mean there. But anyways, though, that's the uh, grenade rampage that we just completed, which, you know, it was a bit tougher than the Molotov cocktail ones, because with the Molotov cocktails, they pretty much just explode upon contact with the ground, or whatever they hit, pretty much, like they can actually hit someone, and then immediately, I guess, explode um, from, from the impact of hitting whoever they hit. Um, but with the grenades, there's a bit of a wait time there, and that can be kind of annoying because you saw some of those gang members start running away when the grenade was thrown, so that can lead to some issues there. And I don't know, I mean, it's overall not too bad, but I can see where the annoying factor would be. But anyways, moving forward from that, you have one of those blowing up vehicles using a rocket launcher thing, but um, that's one of those ones where... It is a pain in the ass because sometimes vehicles don't spawn as often as you would like them to. So something to kind of combat this is to just kill the gang members around you that spawn in to increase your wanted level so that way cop cars start spawning in and then you can blow up the cop cars as they start coming in. So um, that's an idea for you. It's not super, super effective. Like, I don't know a really good way of, like completing that rampage um, that was on the boat dock area because it's like that whole area isn't very friendly to cars spawning in but I don't know I suppose a good idea would be to go to the Sunshine Autos place fairly nearby and blow up the cars that you may have there if you've completed the Sunshine Autos um, import list so that's an idea right there too and of course the road in front of the Sunshine Autos place is fairly high traffic -y, so um, you'll have a lot of cars spawning in, but you also have a lot of pedestrians around the place, and pedestrians tend to attack you when you're using a rocket launcher to blow up vehicles with, so that right there is also annoying. So, um, yeah, just a lot of different factors involved in that that can lead to an annoying uh, situation going on for you. But anyways, we now only have two more rampages left, this one being the first of the two. And this is just more or less the same old story in which you're just using a rocket launcher to blow up vehicles. But something I want to point out as a bit of a uh, reward to the people who are still watching up to this point, which this might be common knowledge, but I don't see it being pointed out too often, is that you can actually use the Rhino Tank or the Hunter to complete any of these rampages with. So, like with the Katana Rampage, you can hop in a tank and start running people over, and that'll count for um, your kill count for the Rampage or for destroying vehicles with the rocket launcher, well, you can say screw that to the rocket launcher and just hop in a tank and start 
running in the vehicles and stuff. I mean, it's just fantastic stuff. I'm going to show it off right here with our final rampage as a bit of a celebratory thing. So you can see at the uh, airbase, we have the Rhino tank spawn because I collected all 100 hidden packages. Well, actually, you only, you only need 90 hidden packages for the Rhino tank, but... Either way, um, I could just hop in this thing and start just shooting at things, running into them, and you can see I'm using the method of boosting my tank even faster by shooting behind me, so that way we get a bit of acceleration going on when we crash into things and need to start up and get going again. So you can see this just chain reaction here of just explosions. I mean, that is just awesome stuff right there, and that you can use the Rhino take. For this business and you can see the cop car is starting to spawn in now you can see them just running into me and blowing up man oh man this is what it's all about right here but as you can see it gets the job done quite nicely and um that completes the rampages part good stuff to finish off with it really gets the blood flowing in all the good places so with all that being said we've completed the rampages and now we can move on to our ne next objective for the side task things which involves doing the stunt jump so that's what we'll be doing in the next part so until then i will see you next time